Hey, Kevin here, top wonder financial advisor and best-selling author, and we are here to talk about the stock market. We, we got to talk about this, okay? I Don't invest a single dollar. Don't invest a single dollar until you finish this video, all right? And I'm, I'm dead serious. You you might have thought you was going to buy your cryptocurrency. You might have thought you were going to you know, buy stock today, whatever. Stop. Don't do it until you finish this video, all right? To be a successful investor, to be someone who can consistently make money over time, you need to have these two things in place and you need to have this for every single thing that you buy. Because I have seen what happens when the opposite occurs even in my own life, right? So I'll, I'll give you an example that did not work for me and all the examples that worked positive, positively for me, but also tell you all the pitfalls that new investors fall into by not being able to answer these questions, okay? So question number one is, why are you investing in X? whatever that thing may be. You could insert a stock, and maybe, I'm just throwing names out here, Coca-Cola, Apple, uh, PAVE, the ETF, the infrastructure ETF. Why are you doing it? That's number one. You need to be able to tell me, but most importantly, you need to be able to tell yourself, because you are you are the investor, okay? You've gotta, you gotta be able to articulate why you're investing in the company. If you don't know why, you don't need to invest in it, period. You have no reason why, just because it's going up doesn't help anybody. It definitely does not help you if you don't know why. But I would even say that this question is even more important. The follow-up question is, why is it going to continue to go up? Or why do you feel that it's going to continue to go up? Whatever you are investing in must have a case to grow in the future. These two things have helped me to become a very successful investor. We talked about uh, Avis, right? We talked about Avis yesterday. And I talked about Avis six months ago on April 28th. At that point in time, it was, why are we investing in it? We think that travel is going to pick up. And the reason why the stock can continue to move forward is because at some point, more vaccines, less cases, more people traveling, and because they weren't necessarily on airlines at that point in time, more people were driving. Then the chip shortage occurred and that was an issue. And then Hertz wasn't a major player at that point in time. So we had, here's why we're investing, here's why we think the stock is gonna to continue to go up. Now before the short squeeze and before it really, really exploded, it was already up, excuse me, it was already up 90%. And then you got the 99 plus on top of that. That's that's how it works, right? When I said Google in December of last year, if you did the tw uh, 2021 investor yearbook, which I think we're gonna try and do this again, I said back then, I think that Google is going to be the company. Why? They are primarily a digital marketing company. They were extremely profitable in 2020 when people cut their marketing budgets because everything was closing down. So you're telling me that you, you grew double digits in a pandemic where people were not spending as much money and then they are gonna be spending money in 2021, that it has to go up. People are gonna be spending more money, money, more money with your company, you're gonna have higher revenues. It, you, got, it, those, you can't make more money and then lose in the market. It's, it, that's rare, that, that doesn't really make sense. But Google went up, it was up 65, anywhere between 65 and 80%. I think I'm up 80% from what I invested in it. I think year to date, at least yesterday anyway, it was up like 65% for the entire year from January to, what was that, November 2nd. You gotta have those two things. When you don't have those two things, you're not gonna be successful. You're not gonna know what to buy, obviously, but you're also not gonna know when to sell and when it makes sense. Another great case, or two actually. When I first started investing, the very first stock I bought was Citigroup. This was 2009, 2010-ish, and I had no idea why. Well, I bought it because, so what's the why? I had a professor tell me that you should buy the banks. That you know, banks weren't gonna be bankrupt for forever, and he was right, and that I should buy Citi. So my first stock, I put a little $300 in it, but I did not have a case as to why banks were gonna continue to go for it. I had no idea. I just bought it because he told me to buy it. I waited three weeks. That wasn't the brightest thing to do. But I waited three weeks, it didn't grow, and I sold it. Because I did not understand why why, why the stock was supposed to grow. And I don't think it did for a little bit. But again, I could not put those two things together. Why am I so optimistic about banking, right? Because I know that number one, 
they have cut some of their losses in that people are going back to work, paying the, those bills, those mortgages, car loans, all the stuff that they get paid from that we know. We also know as interest rates go up, bank profits tend to go up as well. We know that they are doing stock buybacks. We know stock buybacks, which means they're, they're buying their own stock, tends to boost the stock price. These are We've done videos on these. This is why I have I like banking. I'm buying banking because of those reasons. I think it's going to continue to move forward because of X, Y, and Z. When you start to put those two things together, you start to do a little bit better, actually a lot better if you ask me, in terms of your investing performance. But here's the other thing. When you don't have it, you can help to avoid some losses. So for example, Shiba Inu is one of the hottest meme currencies, or at least it was, um, over the last maybe six to eight weeks. You can throw Dogecoin in there as well. Well, people were buying it just because because it was a tweet. And there was no real case as to why it was going to continue to move forward. There is no fundamental analysis that you can do with any cryptocurrency, to be honest with you. And it wasn't being adopted like a Bitcoin was. I invested in Bitcoin because there were cases, right? There were cases where I think we talked about Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan and more, um, what was it, Goldman Sachs, allowing their customers to buy it. You can say El Salvador is a, is a case as to why it's going to continue to move forward. Then you had Square and you got PayPal. All of these apps were really leaning into Bitcoin more than the others. Now, some like a Coinbase or Robinhood, you can get all these things, right? Even on public, you, you can do all these things. But Bitcoin has been the major player in this space. So I'm like, OK, I see why. Right. I've seen the growth. I see why. And I have a good path forward as to why this could continue to grow. Dogecoin didn't have that. Dogecoin crashed after Elon Musk's SNL performance. Shiba Inu, it was up. It was up like crazy for for a little bit last week or so. Actually, no, last five or six days, not so much. And we'll see where it goes, right? There are times when, let's say, a GameStop or an AMC will explode and you can make money from those if you get lucky enough to get in and get out at the right times. But if you don't have those two things, if you don't know why you're buying it and why it's, why it's supposed to continue to go forward, then you're gonna lose more often than you win. And that's not the way that you wanna go about this investing journey. Um, last case that I'll bring up is pay. We talked about infrastructure. And this is one of those cases where you're not always gonna be right 100% of the time because there, there are some unpredictable things out there. We talked about PAVE and all of these infrastructure stocks. Just type in building bread infrastructure on YouTube. You're gonna see all the infrastructure content that we've talked about, all the stocks, all the ETFs that we, we all discussed. Right now, they're still fighting in Congress doing a bunch of stuff, and we may or may not get that infrastructure bill. But again, we knew why, right? There was a bill out there, infrastructure, and some of those stocks were still doing well. Caterpillar at the time was doing pretty well. John Deere, doing pretty well. So the stocks were already doing well as we were trying to rebuild a lot of what was going on, but also we, we had a housing shortage. So we're trying to build more houses and stuff, right? Those stocks were doing well. Then it was supposed, supposed to, we'll see if it still pass, passes, it was supposed to continue to do well when and if the infrastructure bill was passed and it was supposed to pass relatively easily. Congress is Congress, so I'm going to leave that where it is. But I, we had a, here's the why, housing shortage, stocks were already pretty solid in that, in that space, and why is it supposed to keep going? We have an infrastructure bill, these things are generally bipartisan. It should get passed, so let's go ahead and do the ETF and let's roll out with it. That's it. That's that's it. So there is a case, right? If I'm already looking right now in November, I'm going to do more videos in December as I'm closing out the year and figuring out what I want to do for 2022. This is when you sit down and think in advance. If it's December, what am I looking forward to and what am I looking at in 2022, right? This is, this is the time to think about What's going on in the market? What do we expect to happen? And how is this going to play forward? This is one of the reasons that helped me to not invest in Zoom. Zoom was up crazy last year and it made sense. It was, why, 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 why would someone invest in Zoom in 2020? I don't know, lockdowns. Well, why would people continue or why would the stock continue to go up? At the time, we didn't have a vaccine. So it just kept running up, kept running up, kept running up. But in 2021, because by the time I really sat down and decided whether I wanted to do Zoom or not, I've been on podcasts and talked about this, the Flavor Podcast on Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. I sat down and said, well, look, 
the pandemic is not going to last forever. At some point, Zoom right now is a one trick pony. You only do video meetings right now and that's it. They don't sell, which I would prefer them to do. They don't sell like, I don't know, ring lights and meeting software and a camera. They don't sell all that kind of stuff. They, you get the software and that's, that's really it right now. So anyway, at that point in time, let's say this, let's call it June 2020. I said, well, it's not going to last forever. And at some point with more competition, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, uh, Facebook had had something out for a little bit, Cisco. As all this competition, Skype, um, as all this competition started to really crowd that space and things are opening up and a vaccine came out, I'm like, well, that's not going to work, right? That's, you don't have nowhere else to go. This is it's not going to be a thing. And calendar turn 2021, stock at this last time I checked was down 35 or 40%. Again, thinking at thinking in advance. So why would somebody invest in Zoom? At, it used to be because we had the pandemic and we weren't going anywhere. And the, the why now is like, I, I, don't, I don't really see that. And why would it continue to go up? Well, it wouldn't, right? Unless there's a, which I pray this doesn't happen. Lord, I pray this don't happen. Unless there's a new variant, there's no no reason as to why Zoom would reverse course and go back to what it was in 2020. So you've got to have those two things. Why are you investing in this thing? Uh, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever it is, whatever stock, even these little, what I would consider terrible penny stock was $5 or 20 cents or whatever. Why are you investing in it? Okay. And then two, why is it supposed to move forward in the future? And just because people are buying and just because of a tweet, that ain't good enough. That is how you get burned over and over and over again because you're buying because everybody else is buying. That's not a legitimate enough case. That's not that's not gonna work. I am more for an AMC because I can I can see it. I don't love it, but I can see it where like, hey, look, people are gonna be going to some movies more now. Okay, fine. Fine. Makes sense. Right? Uh, makes some sense. I don't think it makes the most sense in the world, but again, that makes some sense. I had no beef with AMC. Got a little bit more beef with GameStop because what? what? what how, how is that supposed to work? You don't make the cons. I've said this before. You don't make the consoles. You don't make the games. Games are becoming more online. When the chip shortage is over at some point, and I can finally buy my PS5 and download whatever games are going to download, what do I need a GameStop for? Ever. When would I ever need a GameStop? Unless things change. So again, why are you buying it? What? Why is it supposed to continue to move forward? If you can get those th two things consistently, you're going to start to win a lot more often. Take a look at my portfolio on um, on public. You'll see Target. That makes sense, right? Nike, when I used to have it, that made sense, right? People were buying athleisure. They had extra money. They were dressing nice to be at home and be comfortable. That's why I bought it. That's why I bought Lululemon for my daughter. Um, talked about Microsoft. People were buying better computers, right? They were using Microsoft Teams and, and Microsoft was just a behemoth anyway, right? Aside from all that stuff. And Amazon, a Shopify, like you can really see like every year has a theme and not every year is gonna be exactly the same, but you've gotta figure out what is moving in the market why is it, why do I like this company? Why are they supposed to keep moving forward? If you cannot answer that question, don't invest in it. If you can't answer that question, you need to be clicking on these playlists here and be watching until you get it. You need to be registering for courses until you get it. You need to make sure that you get my book for burning the blueprint until you get it. And when you do, that's when investing will become a lot easier for you and it's a lot less hard it's a lot less difficult a lot of people try to force something where you're saying well i just you know i'm gonna buy this thing i don't know why but i just hope it goes up and then when it doesn't and it crashes they get upset they come yell at my dms and say well i lost money what do i do now i i can't i don't have a time machine i wish i could i would just reset you and then you know make you watch this video all over again but hey can't do that but i can do what i can do now right that's this is what we got Okay, so please, before you invest in that next thing, please have those two things together. And when you can match those two things, you're good to go. So long as that event happens. You're not, again, I want to emphasize you're not going to be perfect. This infrastructure bill might not happen. If it don't, well, that's it, right? Uh, PayPal, the, that Pinterest deal might not happen. I still like PayPal, but if I were going to get it at that point in time, which we did not, my son had it since last year, I said, I, I would buy it if that deal went through. 
right? Because that's the reason why I would move forward. It didn't. So if you bought it, it's not looking good today, but I still think it's a quality company because e-commerce is still here, because um, PayPal is still a strong player, because they're still in the financial space, because they're opening their own investing app, because, or actually they already have it through Venmo. So these are all the reasons why I still think PayPal is still good moving forward. Now I already got Square, so I'm not gonna get both, right? But these, again, why and what? what is supposed to continue to move the stock? Why is the company continue, or any investment really, why is it continuing, or why is it supposed to continue to move forward? So I've said it enough times, let me know what you think in the um, in the comments. Share the video, like share and hit subscribe. There's a lot of y'all new subscribers, which I do appreciate. You can tell your friends to subscribe as well, because we do this Monday through Friday, every single day. My name is Kevin Matthews, top one financial advisor, best-selling author, and Plutus Award winner as well. But um, that's it for me. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. I still need to work through the Revion content. Revion, Revion, however you want to spell it. Because um, there's, a, there's a lot going on there that I want to break down for y'all. And I don't want to say this is the one, but a lot of people think it is. So we'll break it down and talk about it. All right, that's it for me. Talk to you guys later. Bye.